Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and this is the Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast. Brought to you in association with Kelly Centra, multi award winning store, mountain top letter Kenny, providing 24 hour service, seven days a week. And you're very welcome once again to our championship podcast in association with Kelly Centra at the mountain top. Thanks to them for their continued support. We really appreciate it. Well, it's been a busy weekend. We've got to the last eight of the Intermediate Championship, and we're well on in the Junior A Championship as well. Still a bit of sorting out to be done in the Senior Championship, however. There are teams through to the quarterfinal, but plenty of action expected next weekend in the final round of uh, the league's setup. John Harn and Danny O'Donnell are with me again. Boys, we have plenty to talk about, so we're going to dive straight into it. Let's just look at the results from round three. We're not going to talk too much about Kilcar's victory over Ardra, a comprehensive victory for them. Puts them through to the quarterfinals. On Saturday, we had three games and uh, interesting results from there. John McCool's won 13, Bundorn won 7. Oshin Gallon's story won it. He certainly improved as a player since you said Different. he should be playing a bit better. That's right, Charlie. <laughs> got a few texts on Saturday to say that Oshin stepped up. But it's great to see it, Charlie. No, we weren't having a goal, but we were just saying that, you know, when you have a county player and the forwards and he only scored, I think, a point against St. Michael's. Now, I've heard since, Charlie, that he might have been sick before the St. Michael's game. So you just don't know. We're only calling them from what we see sure. from matches and from outside. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. It's a bit of crack and give her opinion, Charlie. So, in fairness, Oshin has stepped up and, as I said, I got a few texts to say that on, on a Saturday. So, I think he scored 1-8 and you said he set up another few. Two or three so, points. You know, yeah. Uh, a smashing player, Charlie. When I seen him that year when he broke on to the county team, you know, he was coming off the bench and he came on against Kerry and Croke Park and looked very dangerous. You know, he thought he had a bright future and so he still has. He's only young, but a couple of injuries there have curtailed him this last couple yeah, of years, which yeah. has probably affected Denny Gall too in a way because he, he, he was a great prospect, Charlie, but it's good to see him finding his feet again. That's a big result for McCool's and they're right back in the hunt now, Charlie, they to get a quarterfinal are. spot. They, they've it all to play for this weekend. So fair play to McCool's, Charlie. Yeah, coming good at the, coming good at the, at, at the important time. Yeah. Yeah, St Michael's, a one-point victory by the skin of their teeth in Donegal Town. I was talking to a few people who were at that game who'd come on then to Mount Charles, the St Nalls, then Swally game, and they said St Michael's were so fortunate. Now, they had to start without Michael Langan and Martin McElhenney, and they picked up some injuries during the game. The boys came off the bench. I think Martin had to go off again, but, I mean, they, they just got there no more, Danny. They did, and look, for Masters, Charlie, I think we remarked on this before, they're, they're struggling for results, but not for performance. You know, they always play from the heart and they always give it a right rattle, and they, they tested St. Michael's to the core at the weekend, but I suppose that craft and experience got them over the line again. Colm Anthony scoring six points. Now, he wasn't on in the last couple of minutes, but he was pivotal to what, everything they did before that. Yeah, I noticed they started Anthony McFarland at the weekend and started Andrew Kelly, so they had a bit more experience in the field, even though they lost the likes of Michael Langan and Michael Henney from the starting team. But uh, the Reigns just did they just them in the second half and lost Martin again, mm. which is a big concern for them. Yeah. But Michael stayed on the field. But um, look, in a way, one of the championship Charlie is never ha- never easy to get, you know. And St Michael's, it's the way they will look at it is they have bounced back from the Gwydor defeat, and they're sitting now with four points out of the possible six with a home game coming this weekend. So they are still in prime position to qualify for the quarterfinals. But the key for them will be bodies. Who have they back? Can they get Michael back fit? Martin back fit? They will need all those players going in, down the stretch, whether it be this weekend or subsequent games after that. So yeah. the injury list will be worrying them at this stage, but hopefully they can get them all back on the field. A couple of years ago, Charlie, what for masses were going bad too, and I said they had no hope. You I've did. Won, I've won Fam- the, fam- famously I've, said I've, that. I've, yes. I've won the game in the, in the group stages, whatever it was back then. They went out in Beckley and Swally well, Easy. And bit them well. You know, yeah. so mm. fair play. They're like, that would have been a big shock the way the results were going and the way they were playing. They were getting a couple of trimmings there, Cherry, but to come out there and I think they led St. Michael's for a long period. Well, uh, tough, I was speaking to young Connor Breslin in my church. He had to leave the game because he was doing a commentary for Ocean FM and he said they were leading by 110 to 18, but he said they were far the better side. Yeah. And then as I said, several other people came and said exactly the same. But St. Michael's hit them with three late points and that right. was it. That's as Danny says, probably the bit of experience that St. Michael's have that they held on at the end and, and got the points when they needed it. But, you know, you've got to take your hats off to four masters because, you know, when you're getting trimmings, Jerry, in the championship and you're every week and, you know, you're, you're in Division 3 and you're struggling, you're thinking, mm-hmm. what, what's the point here? Where are we going? But fair play to them for, you know, as Danny said, put a bit of pride in the jersey and go out and give it your all and you have to, you, you know, admire them. And I suppose that result now will buy them up for, for their last couple of games and they'll be looking now to say, listen, we're good enough to stay in the senior championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I think a lot come. of people would have had four masses down as being relegation favourites. I wouldn't be so sure about that because, mm-hmm. you know, they would probably have been preparing for that game over the last number of weeks psychologically they know they probably were going to be in the relegation playoffs yeah. so 
they are going to be a difficult opponent in that in that scenario. Yeah, they got the Glen Fun next week, and that uh, yeah, they won't make it easy for Glen Fun. No, and, yeah. and just going back to St Michael's a second. Um, you were that game against McCool's earlier in the championship, but they showed that we would have craft and experience that night as well. They don't panic, so mm. I'm pretty sure at the weekend there, there's no sense of panic, even though they're losing near the end. I think it was the fifth minute of injury time That's when right. got the Edward Riley got the winner yeah. for them. So, yeah. you know, you, you've got to give St. Michael's credit because even if you're not playing well and you still get over the line, it's it's a big it's a big boost to you as a group, you know, yeah. and especially with the injuries they had. So, both teams will probably come out of that for something. Absolutely. You know. Well, the third game uh, in the series on Saturday was St. Nauz against Glen Swally. Glen Swally within a minute of making it to the quarterfinals and then they conceded a last-minute goal, uh, which was heartbreaking for them because I was at that game. They were the better team over mm-hmm. the over the 60, whatever number of minutes were played. Definitely very unfortunate to lose, but a real killer blow with that last-minute goal, John. Yeah, Charlie, and I suppose a lot of talk you know, was about the referee and I suppose the first time it flagged up to me was on Twitter when I seen Joe Gibbons on early on in the in the first half giving out about the refs. Now not like Joe to give out about refs or to do a bit of mouthing, but <laughs> Joe Joe was Since having Joe, Joe was having a go with the ref early on. So, you know, and then I seen that the first seven all sent all scores at half time were all from freeze and chatting to some of the Glen Swilly boys out in the park yesterday they were on about the advantage and it seemed to go on and on and on and, and kinda help sit and all. So I suppose Glen Swilly Terry will uh They've, a, you know, they're, they're upset about it. You know, the well, thing. I think I think they have every right to be upset, yeah, John. You because were at I was at the game and I checked out this advantage rule. I mean, there's changing rules, and I mean, in fairness to referees, it has to be confusing for them. We see it at the professional level across channel. All these new rules, VAR, and all this sort of thing. The advantage rule says that you have five seconds. Uh, I think that's still the yeah, situation. Yeah. You have five seconds. Well, a few of the incidents were more than five seconds when it was called back mm-hmm. and a free award it. Because actually, I read it today. You give the five seconds, and if the player who had been fouled commits a foul, you give the foul against him then. He's had his five seconds. And I, I'm a strong believer. If people get a shot away onto the advantage and it goes wide, that's it. End of story. That didn't happen. And it happened several times that there was, the play was called back for freeze to be awarded that were well outside the five seconds. Yeah. Well, that's 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 frustrating. Now, you have to say for a team, you know, you'd be frustrated if that was happening to your team. So, you know, but you predicted it, Charlie, last week that St. Nalls would put it up to them. You know, you've yeah. seen St. Nalls yeah. a few times and, and that's, you know, they stuck in there and, and you know, went down to the wire and, and they hit them on the break and I think Philip made a good, Philip O'Donnell made a good save. But a brilliant save, absolutely brilliant, but uh, Declan, Meehan, Daniel Meehan Daniel was on and like on a shot tonight. stick so, in the net. You know, St. So, so you know. are proving sticky, you know, they're, they're, they've got a couple of good performances mm-hmm. there, they're on four points, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They're on four points, you know. So but I think, I think only one, two of their scores came from play Right. Okay. and that goal was and well in injury time. Yeah. So that would be a concern. Yeah, you know, they didn't, they didn't score enough against Glen Finn the week yeah. before yeah. And against Terman, you know, they only won that by a, a hair's breadth as well. Yeah. So that that's a but problem. But I suppose for St. Nolls, Terry, it's still senior championship and they're it. still getting victories. And yeah. I'll say they'll take well, Pat Morgan said to me afterwards, it's a big ex- new experience exactly. for them. Like, you know, you know, so, so, experience. so fair played them. And uh, I'd say they probably rode their luck, obviously, in that game and, and got the win. And, and Glenn Swilly will be second to get caught at the end. But, but St. Nolls in a good position, Terry, and, and, and they'll be looking you know, to get the quarter final, which will be a big result for them. Absolutely. But you it's, know? it's so unlike Glenn Swilly to lose a two point lead. Well, I mean, we, when, Michael, we, when Michael Murphy knocked over that 12th yeah. point, I said, that's it now. Yeah. End of story. And even the week before yeah. that against yeah. McCool's, you yeah. never got the sense that they would relinquish no. it. No. And over the years, no. they haven't relinquished one or two point no. leads. So I think no. it was a slip on the day that the ball fell into St. Alls' hands and they broke. And yeah. it's probably it was a turn, a turn, the ball was turned over. Yeah. Uh, and if it hadn't have been, Glenn Sully would have been up the pitch and the yeah. game would have been over type game of thing. Over, yeah. you know? so, but anyway, that's football. Thanks for having football. Yeah. You know? Right, we'll move on to Sunday. Again, no need to talk too much about Neve Connell against Terman. Uh, Neve Connell, if there was any doubts that maybe they weren't at their best, they certainly produced their best again. Windy conditions, rain and all that sort of thing, but just too strong for Terman. I was in Gidor. Interesting game. Uh, Glen Finn played with the wind in the first half and were far too negative in the first 15 minutes before the water break. Hadn't a score on it, playing down the hill towards the dressing room. And in the meantime, uh, Gidor scored 1-3 against the wind. Mm -hmm. Then Glen Finn's attitude changed a bit. They added four points. But you still thought they're two points down, playing against the wind. They don't have any chance here. And particularly then when Gidor knocked on a few points, it's all over. Then all of a sudden, Karen McGlynn gets a goal. Jared Ward kicks a couple of frees and it's 1-7 apiece and you're thinking, game there's on. momentum here now, game on. 
Kidor scored seven points in seven or eight minutes then. They just seemed to write, oh, here, we're a wee bit of bother here. Away they went. But they can't afford to do that, Danny, in, in big games now. Come on, you know, you got to, if you're winning, you got to keep on, keep on, building up the scores yeah. to make sure that the opposition's gone. They didn't do that. And I'm not saying they could have been caught because when they turned on the state at the end, they were very impressive. But Glenn Finn should never have been allowed to get back to 1-7 each. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll something that'll be on their minds during, during the week from a Goudor point of view, that they allowed Glenfin back into that game because Goudor of old would have buried that game. You know what I mean? They would have taken, mm. especially with the conditions in their favour. But they let Glenfin back into it. But I'd, I'm not sure this, the, the water break probably had an impact as well. And I think that's having a huge impact on games again. Yeah. That, I mean, Glenfin probably didn't want that water break. No, the second half, they definitely, definitely they wanted the they, first one, but they didn't yeah, want the second one. didn't want the second one because no. they probably had momentum at that stage. So, yeah. I mean, you're... Basically playing four quarters now, so a good management team can get the boys in, get them organised, get them settled and break that momentum. And look, Guido kicked home with seven points in a row. But I was thinking of the Glenfinn set up maybe early in the game. Sometimes as a manager, you can have a, a game plan in place against so-called bigger teams yeah. that you want to play defensive. And then you have to consider the conditions. So could they have adapted, could they have changed their game plan quicker and pushed up on Guido? Yeah, they should um, have, Danny. They, they should probably have in the first have. half. Yeah, and they probably they might have. think yeah. back now and go, we should have pushed on early in that mm, game. Because mm. when they went at Guido, they found that they could get at them. Yeah. You know, so that's a learning, I suppose, from from a, a, a manager's point of view or players. Um, but again, Glenfinn, you know, they've played reasonably well in this championship. They have. But they've come up against Glenn Connell the first and game. Guido. Yeah. And they're sitting now this weekend on two points and they probably mm. have played better than a team on two points, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, an outside chance of making uh, yeah an outside, outside chance Charlie yeah. this stage an outside mm. chance yeah so you, we'll see you know looking at the table now Charlie will probably chat about in a, in a wee minute like the score difference you know you wonder mm. what, was there a stage yes how far ahead would Bart McGinty have been looking to say right maybe is this game getting away where do you say possibly like, the yeah, game's possibly getting away from us yeah, and, we'll, and we'll close it down yeah. and we'll yeah. keep the score down mm. because what we tell about it, it's going to come down to score difference in a, in a, oh, we think in a, in a couple yeah. of games and Glenn yeah. Finn are going to be in there you know yeah. I think it's kind of impossible you're going out in a championship game you're, you're trying to win it you know in the third game if it was the fourth game and you knew yeah. that you had to keep the score mm. to win by, or lose by so much you could maybe do something but I suppose in the third game of the championship it's, it's, a, it's a long way to think think ahead but you know ending up losing they were 1-7 apiece at the water break and ended up by losing by 7 they might think geez, so we had to held it back maybe lost by 3 or 4 yeah, they'd yeah. be in a stronger position this week and that's good over out McNeilis absolutely didn't you know, so they're, they're still in a, in a yeah. strong position oh a strong position yeah. Kelly Beggs one point victory over, over Milford John um, they were coasting and then Milford got I think a penalty and got them right back into it and Kelly Beggs just about held on but both those teams we expect to be in the, the bottom eight so in the relegation battle, but a good victory for Kelly Bakes. Always good to get a one after two defeats. Absolutely, and at home too. And you know, we've said it before, Terry, that they're missing their two county players. And own band played. Own band played. Sorry, did. right. He well, that, that that's a big help for them. And I'm saying mm. they're delighted to get him back. And you know, they'll be looking now to push on this weekend. and know their way to St Michael's, and even if they were to win, Terry, with their score difference, they, they might find it hard to get in on four points with their score difference. But all them teams, Jerry, are probably looking over the shoulder now at the relegation and, mm. and making sure that, that they're in good shape to, to stay out, stay in senior championship and not get relegated. But uh, a good victory for them, Jerry. And you know, after two bad defeats, it's not easy for them. I thought Mulford would. You know, you're saying there that, that there was a good gap and Mulford came back in. And I thought Mulford would have pushed them. You know, would have been mm. closer for longer, but. Fair play to Kelly Beggs. I'm sure John Cunningham's delighted with that victory. Yeah, for sure. And the last game, Danny St. Eunan's, uh, comfortable at the end against Arua, but it was tied up to half time. Yeah. St. Eunan's, good second half. I didn't see the first half, but there's good second half performance from them. Yeah, I was at that game, Mr. Charlie, and I have to say, I came away from Adon Park impressed by St. Eunan's. Um, I think we said in here last week we'd learn a wee bit more about Arua and where they were at. And I think we learned yesterday they're still a wee bit off where you want to be against the bigger teams. You know, yeah. I think for. 20, 25 minutes, they were very competitive. The game was tight. Um, but St. Eunan's in the second half, see, with St. Eunan's, you're going to be guaranteed a lot of possession. You're going to get 90, maybe 100% of your own kickouts off Sean Patton. But yesterday, they absolutely devoured Iru on their kickouts in the second mm. half. They, mm. they, play, they play a very aggressive zonal system. They push, it was quite funny to watch it. They pushed two half backs onto the 45 and they kind of face the back to the keeper. Yeah. So they're watching for runs and they box everything in and they just go mad for hungry and breaking ball so Aero could hardly get out in that second half mm. you know and um, and the pace they have is, is really yeah. damaging when they get when they get running yeah and this is the thing that, about that St. Eunan's team when when they play the possession game which they have to do at times and they're very well coached to do that 
because teams drop off behind them. They have to go lateral at times yeah, and yeah. then try and inject a bit of pace. And that's that's all right. But see, when a team opens up against them, mm. they can be devastating on the yeah. counter-attack. I mean, yeah. Connor Duck's pace is just unbelievable mm. at times. I thought the positioning of um, Keenan Ward at fullback, he gets them out with real pace. See, when they go short and kickouts, he's driving them out from fullback. He gets them up the field very, very mm. quickly. And then they have pace with Peter McNiff coming six. Connor then nails linking the play up top, even though he had quite enough game yesterday. Yeah. But um, no, Rory will be very happy with that performance. It was a kind of a statement performance that mm. you know whatever we question marks were there after Kilcar. I know Aru aren't at that level, but from a union's point of view, to hit them for two fourteen in a championship match is it's good going. Good so they'll be they'll be happy with that. They needed it, John, didn't they? After the defeat by Kilcar and uh, non convincing victory in Yeah, now. yeah, and. Uh, no, I was happy. Terry was happy with them. You know, the first half was. You know, there was a right breeze favouring Bally Shannon. So you know, it, it was five all at the stage. But we had, we always looked comfortable. Uh, Niall missed the penalty. Some great play by Young O'Mageehan to pick up a dirty ball at pace and then get boxed in. And he just, however he does it, Terry has great hands and put yeah. Niall through. Niall was dragged down, but he missed the penalty. Young Tobin could have had a goal, but it came across a bit high and he, he panned it over the bar. But no, we looked we looked good enough, Terry. We were a point ahead at half time, six five and. I just knew with the breeze in the second half that 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 would be we would be too strong. Uh, Danny mentioned Keenan Ward, Cherry. I haven't seen Keenan play as well in a long, long time for St. Eunice, and I told him that last night, you know. And uh, fair play to him, and you know, if Declan have owners six better defenders and Danny Gall than Keenan Ward, well, I'd like to see them because mm-hmm. I don't think they're there, Cherry, and I think he's got a bit of a raw deal this last maybe eighteen months in the county squad, you know, because he was very good yesterday, and as Danny says, pace and strength and reading the game and. Real leadership, which we needed from Keenan. Well, and he's and one he of the more experienced it. guys. There, he is, yeah. And there's and a lot he, of young lads around is, him. There is, and he, he stood up, you know, and uh, he, very good. Charlie, I was delighted for Keenan because he's a good, good lad and, and gives it all. So he very, very good yesterday, and uh, delighted for him. And you know, uh, I think there's another lad to come on yesterday that deserves to mention was Darren McGrew. Yeah, I, I big, thought, I thought very really good second half. Really good second half, half. Really very, good second yeah, half yeah, performance. Yeah, see, I didn't see the first half. Yeah. I was listening to it. But uh, he, he impacted the second yeah, half. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, he had yeah, a good he chance for goal now. Yeah, he missed yeah, it and his really father yeah. was standing beside me and he wasn't yeah. overly impressed. But no, <laughs> Darren did have a very good, very good. So Rory has got a lot of options there. You yeah. know, Shane mm-hmm. O'Donnell to come on there. Connor O'Donnell Sr. was injured, carrying a knock. So he was rested. Eamon Doherty's got a knock resting him, you know, and uh, Connor Parks. Yeah, they lost so, big Sean McGettigan yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah he's got a couple of knocks. Know, time, uh, so. He got a knock on the head, so yeah. we hope Sean the ambulance was there for him. So he, you know, maybe a concussion or something. Not sure, but I, uh, you know, but you, you'll need mm. them all. But Rory has a bit of strength and depth, and he's got men hungry for play, hungry yeah. for their place, and they're they're all fighting for their place. Kevin Keely played yesterday midfield, did well, you know, young duck. So so they're all there. So now Rory will be happy enough. Okay, right, we're going to take a break and uh, when we come back we'll have a look at the league table as it stands and maybe speculate in, on the basis of round four what might happen next week. Thanks to Kelly Centre at the Mountain Top for their continued support. Uh, you can check out their award-winning automobile-themed diner and, of course, the uh, breakfast, only €5 Euro over there and lunch special starting at six ninety five daily. So go and support them. We appreciate their support. Rejoin us after these.
And you're welcome back, John Harn and Danny O'Donnell in studio with me for our championship podcast as usual. Well, we've had a look at the action in round three. It moves on to round four next week. Some things have already been decided. Uh, Gidor, Kilkar and Neef Connell are already through to the last eight to the quarterfinals. But what five teams will join them? Let's try and figure that one out. Danny, I'll start with you looking at the league table. Um, St. Eunice go to Bundorn. They'll be expected to win that. To go through, yeah. St. Michael's have home advantage over Kelly Beggs. Would we say they'll be expected to win that? If all the lads are back, yeah. if all the lads are back, uh, A. Rua have Ardra in Ballyshannon. They'll be expected to win that. Yes. Now we're we're talking <laughs> expected. Yeah. Uh, St. Nauls go to Milford. You know better than anybody else. Milford are tricky at home. Yeah. St. Nauls have been getting there by the skin of their teeth. Uh, and the two matches that they won and the match that they lost was by the skin of their teeth as well. And Glenn Swoley have, after three good draws, now have drawn Neve Connell. Now, Neve Connell already through to the quarterfinals, don't have anything to prove. Um, McCool's go to Terman down the road to the Bourne Road from Glenn Swoley. The bird flies is not too far. Mm-hmm. Is it a case that Glenn Swoley won't expect to beat Glentys and still probably kill me for saying that, but they'll know that they'll be under pressure to win that game. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. Will they need a favour from Terman if they're going to make the quarterfinals? Uh, well, they need a favour from Terman. Well, the first thing they'll do, Charlie, is look after their own, their own patch. They'll, they'll, they'll believe that they can take New Connell, whether they be full strength or not. That has to be their mindset going into it. They can't think of what's happening in the Bourne Road or anywhere else. They have to look after their own business. If they look after their own business, everything else is fine. Is, it, they, realis- is it realistic? It depends. Anybody of them to think that they will beat Neve Connell? Well, it, de- it depends probably on the Cullen's approach. You know, as we know, they have nothing to play for, right? Except that whatever 15 Martin goes with, and I'm sure it won't be his full 15, but you'd imagine the lads who get the jersey are going to put their hands up and say, look, I want onto this championship team yeah. for the quarterfinal stage. Mm. So you're still going to have a very motivated New Connell team coming to, to Glen Swilly. And we know how strong their panel is. So they, yeah. could, they could make seven or eight changes and still not overly weaken their team. So I think Glen Swilly have a huge challenge ahead of them in terms of, beating this new Connell team um, to their advantage they have obviously the home advantage and depends now how they react to that St. Noll's defeat at the weekend will they feel that, that was their chance yeah. because they were only a couple of minutes away from the quarter final so what's the atmosphere like at training this week is it a case of okay we, we didn't get it on Sunday but we can get it this weekend or are some of the younger lads thinking ah oh, jeez we had our chance you know so the psychology of the games and the teams is going to be very important this weekend but the question on the Bourne Road one is, Terman again, nothing to play for, only pride. But pride's a big thing in yeah. championship football. Yeah. So you're never going to go out on any given day and not give it your all. So they're going to be motivated and McCool's are clearly going to be motivated coming down because I think, Charlie, we're looking at a five-point, all we need there is a five-point swing. Yeah. So if Glenswilly were to lose, 
even a narrow defeat, which would be something they would take as a second best option, mm. then you're looking at McCool's only needing to win by three or four points themselves. Yeah. Plus seven sudden, for Glenn Sully at the moment, plus, plus two. two for yeah. McCool's. Doesn't if, as you say, Danny, it only needs a three point turnaround either side. Either side. And yeah. if you're looking if you're looking at it cold calculated, you'd have to think McCool's might just be in the driving seat on this one because because Terman have struggled. Yeah. And the economy being who they are. It's, it's a fascinating it's yeah, a fascinating it's tough, stuff no. well, McCool's two, two narrow defeats against St Michael's and who else beat them St Mike McCool's beat by St Michael's they beat Bundorn themselves beat Bundorn and Glenn they lost Swally, the first Glenn game Swally Glenn, Glenn Swally beat, beat them. them so they lost narrowly to Glenn Swally they lost narrowly to St Michael's and they had a comfortable victory over Bundorn so they had been there thereabouts in mm-hmm. all three games the, the two that they lost could have maybe swung. Mm-hmm. They had the momentum in Glen Swally that day to won yeah. that game. Yeah, yeah. and you that know. was probably their chance to, to put yeah. Glen Swally out of the equation and so didn't, didn't we, do it on the day. look at McCoon's, although they have only two points, they, you know, they've been close to a couple more. They've been close to a couple more and we we, we talked about Oshin Gallen earlier and the influence he's had over the last two games. Of all the, I mean, can Terman curb him? Have Terman a man to mark Oshin Gallen yeah. to keep him quiet? Because if Oshin Gallen produces the same form again, mm. McCool's are going to get 110, 111, 112. Yeah. Then Terman needed to, to match that. Then Glen Swilly on the other side, are they defensively strong enough to curtail New Connell? I expect that to be a low-scoring game. I think that's going to be ultra-defensive. I think Glen Swilly yeah. are going to go defensive and they're going to try and hit in the counter-attack. Maybe get Michael to hit a freeze over the bar. They're not going to yeah. go open against Glenties, no. I hope. And Glenties don't generally play open either. So no. that's going to be cagey. So a yeah. lot might depend on what happens in the Warren Road. Mm. It's, it's fascinating, Jerry, yeah, it's because, because Glenties, obviously, Neve Connell, they're not going to play their best. They're always going to, like, the thing is, Jerry, they could be playing St. Eunice, Kelcar, or Gidor the following week mm-hmm. in, a, in a quarter final of the championship. Mm. So why would Martin Regan play Kieran Thompson, Anthony Thompson, Leo McLoone? Uh, who else are there? You know, uh, loads of them. Loads some of them, of young Doherty's. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. his best five or six players. Why would he's nothing? He's nothing to go out to Glen Swally and play them, and, and, and Glen Swally needing everything mm. in a hot and heavy game, and maybe pick up a red card or definitely pick up an injury. You know what I mean? So I can't see Martin Regan starting any of his big players. He, he, he to me, he'd be silly to do it. So does Glen- this? Does this? Does this? What you? I understand what you're saying, John. Does this mean that the people who are criticising about the way the thing's set up this year, about no advantage to finish in first or fourth in the league table, that it's the top eight and then it's an open draw and all that sort of thing? You know, I don't know. I, I, yeah, because you know, cause a point was made to me, John, the reason I'm asking yeah. this question by somebody who's involved with one off the top four. Uh-huh. He said they should be made to play to one to be first or second yeah. or third or fourth. Yeah. To, you know, they have the advantage of the draw yeah, yeah. and to avoid the big, the other guys until yeah. the semi finals. Yeah. Well, well, fair know. enough, but then that. Like the top four of the minutes, the big four, you yeah. know, so it, it takes away them from the romance of them drawing each other in the quarter final and giving a lesser team a chance to get to a yeah. county semi final or a final if the draw will. Well, we have a situation now that Kilcar can't play Gidor or St. Unans in the quarter finals because they've played them in the section. Yeah. So they can't play oh, either right, of those okay. two yeah, sorry. In, in the quarter finals. So the they can't play Glenties. Okay. Yeah, see, yeah, whatever the situation is with the top eight, and they've taken that away this year in terms of the seeding. Yeah. Even if they want to retain that, don't give the home advantage to the top four. I think no. that's where pe- exactly. I think exactly. that's where people had a problem with oh, absolutely. It, that not alone, not alone where they've been seated, but they got home advantage. Yeah. So even if you if you want the integrity to last into the four games, you probably mm-hmm. have to retain the you notion would, of the top four. They've done the intermediate championship, the top eight, and then you have a straight quarter final draw. Then yeah. with played at neutral venues, yeah. like you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but and this is going to happen in all these venues at the weekend. Some teams have. Nothing, very little to play for, and sometimes a lot to play for. Mm. I was in that situation with Milford a couple of seasons ago. We topped the group, and we had to go to Glen Swilly. Yes, and Glen Swilly needed a result, and then some other result to go the way. But like I was, was there that day. Yeah, but like was happening this yeah. weekend, and one or two people trying to have a go at Milford at the time that they went to a fairly strong team. Mm. But we as a group had discussed that, and we, we went to people outside the group to find out what the yeah. psychology of sport and how that would affect mm. teams. So, look, a team like Milford didn't have nine or ten lads to bring in anyway, but. The psychology of it is if you switch off for a week and say this game doesn't really matter mm. and then you try and turn it on the week after not easy. it's not easy to do. Yeah. So yeah. do you keep the momentum going? Do you keep That's, playing? Because yeah. you know, if you keep your mind sharp all the time it means that you don't have to turn it on a week. Yeah. It's, it's happening all the time. So that's why I'm saying the Connell, whether they play their strongest 15 or not 
are going to come down to Glenswilly to win that game mm. oh, regardless without without because without they'll want to keep that momentum yeah. going so yeah. and Terminal will be in the same I mean, are you going to send a team out any given day to say the boys this game doesn't matter just go out no. and play it not I in don't football. people do that no, no, not no, in no, football so whoever yeah. wins their games this weekend will earn it mm. St Michael's St Michael's will beat Kelly Beggs will they? It depends who's available to St Michael's yeah. Charlie mm. I think yeah. they're under pressure now Them, you know you're talking about Michael Haney and, and Langan, two of their best players. If both of them weren't available yeah, to start... But, but Michael finished the game yesterday, so I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, It'll be, but he couldn't start. He didn't start, no. But I wonder were they resting a wee bit? Did they take Maybe. from us for granted a wee bit? Possibly, yeah, possibly. Yeah. possibly yeah. But yeah. home advantage yeah. in the bridge, Charlie, is big. Oh, I know. You know, And I was speaking to a couple of Milford lads about their game against Kelly Beggs. Kelly Beggs weren't overly impressive in that game. Mm. I know they had a six-point lead and they allowed Milford back into it. Yeah. And in the last four or five, mil, my, five minutes, Milford should have actually won that game. Mm. They had the chances. I think Tony McNamee missed the last minute free to get a draw. Yeah. So it wasn't a convincing Kelly Beggs win. So have they got enough confidence from that to go down to the bridge and win? I can't see that. So I think I think St. Michael's will qualify for the quarterfinals and that brings the pressure back onto that game we're talking yeah. about. And St. Noel's down in Milford? Well, St. Noel's won. Well, see, we're, we're saying that they're going to win, but, you know, if, if they were to get beat, that would put a whole different, it would put Glenn Swilly in, a, in a, you know, a stronger yeah. position oh, yeah. and, and, and possibly McCool. So that, you know, St. Noel's are going to have to go and obviously they're going to have to go mm. and win, but it mightn't just be straightforward. It, it there, could, there, there could be a there yeah. could be a kink there, Charlie, with Milford. You just don't know Milford at home. You see, yeah. Milford's problem this weekend is that they're more or less guaranteed to be in the relegation because yes. the score difference is minus 19. Mm. But, it's the same, and now they do have a lot of injuries. So anyone that's carrying any kind of knock, it would be a big risk from SP to play them. Yes. But at the same time, they don't have thirty players, so he's no. going to have to put out pretty much the same team he put out yesterday. Yeah. And there is a rivalry between Milford and St. Alls. They played in the intermediate final a couple of seasons that's ago. Right. They had a feisty league game this year, Charlie. I think you were down at yeah, it. I was. You know, so you won't go down to Moyle View, come away with two handy championship points. No. You'll have to no, earn definitely it. Definitely not. You know, and, definitely not. And if Milford say, for example, were to win that game they might see that as a stepping stone into mm. the relegation playoff. So I don't think there's any gimmies this weekend. For Glenn Finn against four masters. Glenn Finn uh, on two points at the moment. Four masters, obviously a big game yesterday and uh, or at the weekend and nearly won that against St. Michael's. But Glenn Finn at home now have an opportunity, but uh, their score difference is not good. They're, they're on what? Minus, uh, minus nine. Minus yeah. nine, which is a long way back. Yeah, that, that's And, and they don't problem. score an awful lot, Glenn yeah. Finn, but they're going to have to get away from type at the moment. You know, if they have any chance of making the quarterfinals, they're going to have to have a big one over four masters. They're going to have to win that game by anything between 10 to 15 points. Yeah. You know, um, do they have that ability? If if they go at four masters and decide, you know what, we're in the relegation throw playoffs, caution unless, the throw, throw caution, caution to the one. one. They have plenty of pace mm. from the likes of Aaron McGlynn and Carl McGlynn. They have a good half back lane with Ross Marley and Frank McGlynn. That's it. right, yeah. They have Jared Warren, Kieran Brady up top. Mm. So it's not beyond possibility that they could prop a big score but that's been disrespectful to four masters they're, they're still going to be playing for a bit of pride so yeah. they want to get something out of it as well but it would take a big turnaround for Glenfin to qualify they would need a big one on their own and they would need McCool's probably not to win and Glenswilly really not to win, not to win. Uh, mm. that's a lot of variables for them I think yeah. you know. who's going to make it into the quarterfinals then boys now we already know Gidor Kilcar Leif Connell are, are in, in the quarterfinals St. Eunice to beat Bondorn to reach it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, St. Nulls to beat Milford to reach it? I wouldn't be so sure. I wouldn't be so sure, no. Yeah, I think it's... It yeah. depends on the Milford's approach. St. Michael's to beat Kelly Bays to yes, make yes. it? A. Rua to beat Ardra to make it? Yes. yes. Okay. McCool's to beat <laughs> Terman and make it? McCool's to beat Terman, yes, to make it? Oh, I don't know. It's going to be tight, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I'd really... I mean... It is. If I, if I were... Put, put, put on the pressure and call the next quarter finalist I would probably I don't there's something about this Glen Swilly team at the minute yeah. in, I mean you were there against McCool's yeah. they'll turn that into a championship oh, occasion absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You know, and they'll bring yeah. everything to it and that match you were talking about against Milford I can't remember what the other match was that was affecting it but somebody got a late point in that game because I remember three or four boys nearly fell off the back of the lorry that day four losses in Glen Finn the that teams are playing this weekend yeah. it was yeah, it was. yeah. <laughs> And, and that uh, put Glen Finn through. They were out. Yeah. Glen Swilly were out of the championship, and then somebody got a score to yeah. get them back into the championship again. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see what it's happens. It's exciting, Charlie. It's, it's exciting. Great, you know, it's brilliant. They're, 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 it's great. It's great. Yeah. There's so many matches that matter so much in the final so day, isn't exactly, it? Really, exactly. You know. That's what you want. All right, then. Well, we know the quarter finalists for the uh, intermediate championship, and we're going to be talking about that when we come back after this break.
And you're welcome back and thanks yet again to Kelly Centre at the Mountain Top, our sponsor of the Championship Podcast here on Donegal Daily, Donegal Sport Hub. And just to remind you to support them as they are supporting us. You can see details of the plenty of good offers that are on on your screen. Right, lads, John and Danny, we'll move on to the Intermediate Championship. Uh, I predicted eight teams last week and I'm delighted to say I got all eight Right, John? John's not giving me much credit for it. <laughs> anyway, let's look at Group A. Clohanili went to Boncrana, Danny, and got a two-point victory. The unpredictables, uh, I've yeah. decided to call Clohanili. You're never sure what to expect, but they went down to Boncrana. They got the victory that guarantees a quarterfinal spot. That's as much as they could do. Yeah, and we talked about this game last week, Charlie, yeah. and we, asked, we, we can ask the question, which one of those two teams were genuine contenders. If Bunkrana were genuine, they'd have to be Clonely. Yes. And if Clonely were genuine, they'd have to go and take Bunkrana, mm-hmm. which they did. So I think that puts Clonely in a really good place going to the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're still going. You went to Bunkrana, who are still. I know they lost now to Clonely and they lost to Glen. You know, psychologically, that's got to do damage to their yeah. prospects. But they'll still probably make, probably make the well. They're playing fan in the quarterfinal. It's not be easy for them. No. So. But in terms of Clohanili, yeah, it's a big one. And I mean, yeah. the Jason McGee and all the players back playing yesterday. and Lost their first game, Danny, to Neve Columba, despite the fact that Neve Columba were down to 14 men. Yeah. Under pressure straight away because they had two away games to come against Fanet Gales and uh, against Montcrana. Neither were going to be easy to win, but they've, they won by four points in Fanet, two points in Montcrana. Not big ones, but the hard earned victories, yeah. the ones. And we said this at the very beginning of this championship. You know, if, you, if you're off it at all at intermediate level, you'll get beat. Yeah. So they were obviously not on it completely against Glenn, but you have to give Glenn credit for going down and taking them. But sometimes it's better just to be winning by a couple of points in the media championship because if you hit form every day you're out, yeah. it's very hard to hard make it when you same. when you need it yeah. on the final yeah. day. So they'll be happy enough that they're grinding out results at this stage. Um, but maybe that first result they had against New Columba might say a wee bit more about New Columba and how good mm-hmm. they might be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> And they beat Convoy, John, uh, as we expected, very yeah. co- comfortably, 14-5. I mean, there's, n- there's no surprise in that one. No, no, they're going well. Cherry, they're the form team in the Intermediate Championship. Aaron Doherty's putting up the big scores for them, but it's not just a one-man show. Cherry, you know, one man can't do it all. So, like, they are the form team. They're playing well, and we expected them to win at home, but, like, they put a big score up against Bunkran the week before. So, mm. you know, what we've seen so far... They're definitely the form team in Group A, and I suppose don't know the form team in, in yep. Group B. So, you know, uh, it's making for an intriguing quarterfinals mm-hmm. coming yeah. up, Charlie. Fanet Gales, I mean, people, will, everybody beat Burt comfortably. Fanet Gales beat them, but not that comfortably. What does that say, Danny? I, th- I think it it probably tells us what we probably think in terms of Fanet are just slightly outside that top four, but at the same time a dangerous team if yeah. they click. Um, and now that they're in the quarterfinals and they're the pressure's off them. I think it was really important for them to make the quarterfinal. Mm. You know, on the back of that defeat they had against mm-hmm. the Gales in the promotion, promotion you know, yeah, yeah. we said this last week, they had to follow that up by getting to the quarterfinals. So they'll go now as underdogs into the quarterfinal and they won't, that won't bother them. You know, like I've seen that team play and they're not bad. You know, I don't think they're as good as Dunlow and Glenn, but yeah. they're not a million miles off maybe that Bunkrana team that they're playing in the quarterfinals. Mm. So, you know, a, a fan of team in a quarterfinal will be dangerous and if they if you get through the quarterfinal, I mean, it's it's open season after that for all whatever teams are left. So Absolutely. it's a dangerous game for Bunkrana, that one, coming up. It is. Yeah. Group B, John, as you said, done low. Uh, again, a big victory over Neve Alton, 4-10 to 5 points. Uh, unbeaten, looking strong in that particular section. Neve Breed against Neve Wara. Neve Breed, who were, uh, I mentioned last week, hockeyed by Dunlow yes. in the first game. They've come back, they've won all their games, some, some tight, but they're in the semi, in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, good result for them there, Cherry, I suppose, at home to Neve Wara. You know, it wouldn't, they wouldn't have thought they would win it that easy, I suppose. They thought Neve Wara might put up a better show, but I suppose six points, a six-point victory, Cherry, at home, they'll take it, as you say. They're fine form after after a big start, but everyone's got hockey by Dunlow, so there's yeah. no shame there, and I suppose... They'll be looking to say if you know the next well, you know, uh, Neve Breed. They've got Neve Columbus, so they've got a a tough game in the quarter final. But they're there with a shot, Charlie. And it's going to be a neutral venue, and you know, you, you just don't know that they're coming in now with a bit of form. They have two victories under their belt, and and, and they'll be happy with that. Yeah, and Malin two points victory over Red Hughes. Uh, did we expect them to win by more, Malin? Uh, no, I wouldn't expect it by much more, Charlie, because that Red Hughes team were fancied, and they certainly would have fancied their chances of making the quarterfinal yeah. and it's it's hard to believe they've lost all four games in the group Red Hughes you yeah. know that's that's yeah. a that's a bit of a shock to be honest mm. um, but no Malin again a bit like the Fanet a dangerous team rather than one of the more favoured teams they could be tricky enough but I think they're playing 
Claw Neely. Neely. So yeah, that's they I mean that's what they got, yeah they've got yeah. a big ask there. Yeah. Yeah. Don Lowe and and Neve Columba topped the group, and then Claw Neely, Malin and Neve Breed all at six points. Von Cran and Neve Warren fan at Gales four points. So the quarter final draw made yesterday: Claw Neely against Malin, Neve Breed against Neve Columba, Neve Warren against Don Lowe, and Fan Gales against Von Cran. We won't go too much into it because I don't think it's been played next week. It's been played the following week. They're taking a break, but we'll look at those matches and. Uh, Couple of clinkers there. Before before we leave, Charlie, we have to give uh, an old friend of mine. I mentioned Jared McGill yes. from Neve Columba. Jerry McGill, yeah. Uh, and Jerry said that he played his last game in Glen Calm Kill yesterday in Park McGill. So he's there mm. a long time since he was fifteen and he's the same age as me, Charlie. He's mm. 44, 45, So that's my forty three. I think he's forty three or forty four. Forty three. So that's uh, nearly thirty years of service. Twenty eight years 28 of service, service Charlie. Yeah. So he's and still in, going strong. Still playing goals. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, he was on that. He played. Then he got on the 21 with me. He was our goalkeeper and uh, he was in UCD at that stage and playing Sigerson, a great goalkeeper, Charlie. And he came back up for the Masters a couple of years ago. Him, Jerry's living in Carlo now in Prince of the School and a busy man and a young yeah. family and coming up to play for the Masters. You know, great, Aye. great lad and great commitment, Charlie. And uh, it was a big help to that Masters team. So uh, fair play to Jerry. You he's know, like he's yourself, he never missed a training session, Sean. <laughs> Jerry was coming up from Cardo and I was cutting grass <laughs> out the road, Charlie. So uh, don't tell Val Murray that. But no, and I suppose too, Charlie, we've seen uh, over the weekend Mickey Higgerty making 100 championship Fantastic. appearances yeah, for, for yeah. Kilcar. So Great servants, eh? Brilliant to Mickey and, and fair play them. Uh, yeah. Some achievement, so... Uh, just acknowledge well the done. two boys that's good John thank you Danny the Junior Championship big result for Narasa went down to Downings and won by 1-9 to 11 that's four four ones for them I mean that, that that's a big statement really isn't it it's a very big statement Charlie it was down in Downings mm. and um, I think we talked about Narasa in here a few weeks ago we how, look, how remarkable it is that they, they're punching the numbers the that they, they have to, yeah. to work with yeah. but they've always been they've always been a good junior team as such you know they'll, they'll compete well in Junior Championship and Look, you're right, that's a statement they've made now. So mm. we were talking here, I said last week that it was looking like a Downings, Larry Kenny Gales final. Yeah. But that's yeah. unlikely that's, to be the case now because it looks like it's yeah, thrown a and, bit of doubt on yeah. that because Narasa now have become serious contenders for the Junior Championship. So that's mm. Narasa. Our Downings probably need to bounce back in terms of they'll, they play Oris this weekend. They so play Oris, uh, They'll probably yeah. still qualify well, down, for the semi. Narasa now are the automatic qualifiers yeah. for the semi final. Downings now uh, and Moville look as if they'll be in the quarterfinal matches against yeah. the, the teams from Group B. Yeah. I know we mentioned Johnny Boner last a couple of weeks ago being a help in the Ross this year. Have they anyone else back, Charlie? You would you know that I, they I don't, I, To be honest, John, I don't, don't really know. know. I don't know. No, they've held, they've held on to the, they did a crop of players there about four or five years ago, yeah. the likes of Christian Boner, Orn Malloy, there's a young coffee lad there, I think, as well. They've they've kept that group together, which yeah. is in there, I think, mainly maybe 22 to 25, 26. Mm. Um, but no, they've they've good players, and mm. I mean they've had a decent league campaign as well in Division Four. They have a chance of going to Division Three, so and they've that obviously the new pitch. So yeah. even though they have small numbers, they're certainly maximising what they have. Mm. And I um, saw them won an epic game in Convoy. I can't remember who the opposition was. Uh, Declan was in goals for them that mm. day, and uh, it was an incredible match. Mm. And the spirit that they showed that day was just unbelievable. Because I mean, they were I would say it was fair to say they were underdogs. Whatever yeah. the game, it must have been a playoff of some type yeah. when it was played at neutral venue. But for them to come through that and and you know go to Downings and win because Downings, as Danny said, I, I watched that Downings team last yeah. week and they were yeah. they were impressive. I was against the Unions development team, but they yeah. were impressive and they have a very good forward line. So that was a big statement by the Rossi. Ones from Oval and Oris in that group as well, and in Group B, uh, one for Letterkenny Gales over Neve Column Kill. And Muff and Cairndonna drew. So Cairndonna and Letter Kenny Gales play, and yeah. the, the winners of that will we'll qualify the for group. the semi finals. Yeah, the winners of the top the group, mm. yeah. Um, you'd fancy probably the Gales, but I know that Cairndonna would fancy the chances, especially with Conor O'Donnell driving them from midfield. Yeah, so sure. that'll yeah. be, I don't know where that game's been played, but that'll be a big game there. That'll be a big game. C Championship, John. Neve Connell won nine, McCool's five points. Victory for Neve Connell. And yeah, well, that, you, you said about that. I predicted Econ that, team. Charlie. I, yeah. But I was, I was chatting to Mickey McLean from Glen Finn at the weekend, and Mickey said that they had Glenties on the on the rack the week before in the in the, in the semi final. They were leading mm. them I think, going in, into the last five minutes, and, and they kind of fell away. So yeah. I was surprised that Mickey to say that there. But no, for me, Glenties, a young team, and James Plummer Boy was the manager, and I heard him on the radio, and congrats to James. And he gave a lot of young players football, Charlie, and that's what that's what it's all about. And fair play to him. And Fair play to Glenties. They they have that age profile where they're keeping their young players. Where as I say, it's other teams, it's more of a dad's army. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, old boys hanging on, getting a bit of football. So uh, Glenties were always had a bit of pace, Jerry, and there's some good play like that wee boy. Uh, he was on the minors, Robbie Malloy, is it or Robbie? 
Uh, uh, he was sure. played the Donegal Miners this year, good wee player, corner forward. So, the, the, yeah. the, the, you yeah. know, that, that kind of player there, Terry, which was as <laughs> hard at, at junior seed level to hand mm. wee boys like that there. So run uh, past you very quickly. Run past John. you very quickly. <laughs> when you're I saw, I saw a tweet from from Plummer afterwards saying one down, two to go. So uh, plenty to go for the clean really clean sweep. Uh, big talk, yeah, big talk. Big talk. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the Bradish yesterday in the O'Donnell Park. He said, "Ah, we got a bit fed up with people saying that we were off the pace." <laughs> you know? right, right. I think we're referring to some of us on here. Maybe. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him, ladies. Uh, just to confirm that the senior semi-finals and the intermediate semi-finals will be on next week. Glen Finn against Boncrana and Mulville against Terman and the Seniors and then an intermediate is St Mary's Convoy against St Eunans and A Rua against Fanet Gales the junior semi-finals not sorted out yet they have to be finalised so plenty of good action next weekend again who will be the final eight in that championship we know three we need another five before that happens who will be in the quarterfinals and what will the quarterfinal lineup be? We'll have the answers to that. And of course, we'll look forward to those intermediate championship quarterfinals next week as well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Tommy Conway here at Full Tilt Studios for looking after us as usual. Rejoin us next week. Thanks again to Kelly Centra for supporting our podcast. Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast brought to you in association with Kelly Centra multi award winning store Mountain Top Letter Kenny providing 24 hour service 7 days a week <laughs>